Hi guys, this is me, Rusty from Central Texas, USA. It is 11.48 a.m. Central Standard Time, and I'm at my home base in Central Texas, USA, and it's about 60 degrees outside, which is pretty nice. And I full-time RV, done it for 20 plus years. I also go camping in a car. And if you're interested in either one of those, well, check out my playlist on my homepage. Rusty78609. Anyway, <clears throat> since we're coming up on the Christmas season, I thought I would do a little quick, well, not a quick, just a video about how Christmas was for me. I'm age 71. How Christmas was for me at age five, six, seven, eight in that range in Kennedy, Texas, out on a farm. In say the 19 early 1950s well I'm gonna tell you and then you can compare that with how Christmas is today in your world okay no matter what age you are okay okay leading up to Christmas was an event okay for us out in the country basically poor not real but you know kind of typical farmer types you know and uh, Prior to Christmas, about maybe three weeks, we would go out and find a Christmas tree. We didn't go cut our own. We went into town, and usually the Lions Club sold Christmas trees, some kind of pine Christmas tree. And we would pick one, and it had to be just the right one. It had to have the, a stem on the top that stuck straight up so you could put your angel or your uh, star on the top of the Christmas tree. Big deal. You had to get just the right one. It had to be just the right height because it couldn't be too tall because it touched the ceiling and bend over. And so anyway, all that had to be planned out. And Mother must have done it because I didn't, hear, I didn't do it. None of us other kids ever. I have two sisters and one brother, mother and father. There were a total of six of us. And of course, on Christmas, we had everybody out, well, kin folks and stuff because everybody lived in the same area. And so step one, get the Christmas tree. That was a deal bring it home, and they had a little Christmas stand, and sometimes it was hard to get it to stand up because the Christmas tree always wanted to fall over. And you had to put a little water in the bottom of the stand so the tree wouldn't turn brown too soon. And um, anyway, then you had to get it to stand up straight, a little pretty big operation to get the tree ready to go to be decorated, and that was the next step. And then what we would do is all the kids would... <clears throat> Uh, we, mother would pop some popcorn and then we'd string popcorn. You'd get a needle and thread and put it through the popcorn kernels and make little strings of popcorn, okay? And we'd put those on the Christmas tree as decorations. That was one thing. And then we had other decorations. We had little icicles that we bought and they were like little aluminum strings thing and you'd throw them on the Christmas tree and it looked like, I suppose, like icicles. And we had some little Christmas bulb, bulbs, balls, stuff, regular stuff. And we de all the kids decorated the tree. Then we put the lights on. And back then, the lights were a little different in that they had little bulbs in them about that long. And uh, they screwed in. And if one bulb didn't work, well, that whole string of bulbs would not work. So every bulb on, every, on the string had to work or none of them would work. So it was all or none on that. So once the Christmas tree was uh, decorated, uh, then, uh, of course, you know, there, it was a big event, and uh, let, me get, let me get my note here. But anyway, yeah, my grandmother at that time of the year made something called divinity. Now, you may never have heard of it. I didn't know what it was. It was like candy. It was a little cookie. Well, it wasn't cookies. Anyway, it's divinity. If you don't know what it is, it's hard to explain. But it's sweet, and it's good, and kids love it. I loved it. And she would give us a shoebox of that, and we would have that during the Christmas season, and and, uh, and she also had divinity at home and other stuff and cookies and stuff whenever we went into town. And, of course, mother made all kind of stuff. And then, of course, we would go into town and do our Christmas shopping. And there weren't many places to shop, okay? We had a five and dime. We had a couple of drugstores that had stuff. And there, were, there wasn't a hell of a lot to shop from, okay, in Kennedy, Texas. And, uh, but that's where we did our shopping. So you can imagine what we got for Christmas, not much. Now, there were other kids in town, parents, who would go to San Antonio and buy them stuff. My parents didn't do that, that's for sure. And so anyway, so you get, we get all the Christmas gifts, and you get them wrapped, and you put the name, you know, to, from, on, on the uh, 
Christmas gift, put it under the Christmas tree. And as the days leading up to Christmas went by, the little pile of gifts got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger under the tree. They'd be all scattered out and stacked up and got really exciting, you know, building up to the big event, Christmas Eve. And that's when we opened our gifts, okay? And uh, so then one of the on Christmas Eve, one of the kids, I don't know, or two would hand out the Christmas gifts that you know, you still I think we started right about dark and of course the Christmas tree would be all lit up it was a big deal you know you'd have maybe your uncles and aunts over and grandma and whoever else you know be a room full of people and you'd hand out the gifts and uh, anyway then you'd end up with a big pile of trash and all that stuff and as far as Christmas gifts uh, you know I got uh, socks shirts underwear t-shirts uh, I, I, I don't think I ever got any real, I might've got some toys. I, I got a few. I just don't remember what they were. I got one, one time that was like a B-29 bomber, you know, the old propeller driven bomber. And, uh, you pushed it and it made a noise. Well, I thought I wore it out in about a week because I pushed the crap out of it. We had a front porch and that poor old airplane took a hell of a beating out there. I guarantee you, I flew all over the world from the front porch of our farm in Kennedy, Texas, trust me. And I bombed everybody. But anyway, maybe y'all, you're lucky you survived. <laughs> if you're, you're watching this video, you're one of the few. Anyway, survivors. But anyway, we got other, you know, basically we got stuff you could use, you know, and, uh, of course, Christmas is a big time. Mother cooked a lot of stuff, you know, we had, divi you know, of course, we had the divinity and then mother made fudge, chocolate fudge. And, uh, you know, we had popcorn, popcorn balls, you know, with uh, caramel stuff on them and all. That was a big deal. I thought that was neat. And then on Christmas Day, of course, you know, mother was cooking and you could smell the bread cooking, the rose cooking, the chicken cooking, all, all the stuff she prepared. It, it was just, you know, of course, back then there was no central air, no central heat, no air conditioning, at least for us. So, the, you know, on Christmas, it, most of the time, the windows would be open because it was warm enough, like today right now. Here it is, December the 11th, uh, and it's uh, 64 degrees outside. Well, it was probably the same back in 1950 to 1955, and that's the period I'm talking about. So anyway, uh, Saturday morning, or excuse me, the day after Christmas, then we'd have the big noon Christmas Day meal, and all relatives, a lot of the relatives would come over, maybe eight, ten people, plus their kids, you know, eight, five or six, eight, ten kids. The kids, we ate in a separate little dining room. The parents ate in the other room. And big just gets stuffed. You just get stuffed. <clears throat> and then after uh, after the noon meal, <clears throat> the kids would usually, we could walk down about, it was about two miles from the house. There was a little, uh, it was actually called a beer joint. It was called Kravitz's Beer Joint. But he also sold firecrackers on the holidays and Christmas. He had a lot of them. But in there, you could get firecrackers then that were like bombs, okay? Uh, they had one called an M80. That was like a T, you know, it had, it was about as big around your thumb and in the center, it had a, uh, a fuse, but the fuse was waterproof. You could pack mud around it and throw it in a river and, and kill fish. You could, you could, you could. And it was powerful. I mean, it was like a little hand grenade. And then the, ne the next most powerful was a thing called a cherry bomb. And those were three for a quarter. The uh, uh, M80s were two for a quarter. That's a lot of money back when. And the way I got some money was at Christmas, some people, you know, some of the relatives were lazy like me and they just give you money. And uh, some of them give you a dollar, some of them give you $2. You know, rarely did you get more than that. My grandfather, uh, way back when, when I was about five in that range, would give us a, a little leather pouch with $2 worth of nickels in it. Oh man, that was, you were wealthy because back then you could go to a movie for 12 cents. You could get a Coca-Cola for a nickel. You could get you could get a hot dog for 15 cents. You could get a banana split for 25 cents. They finally went up to 35, but they were delicious. And I mean, three big scoops of ice cream with split banana and cherries and pineapple and chocolate syrup. <laughs> Pure low calorie, right? Yeah, you can imagine. But anyway, uh, on back to the firecrackers, they had another little bitty one called uh, uh, Lady Fingers. And, uh, you know, my brother told me one time, so don't worry about it. You can hold those and you can hold them between your fingers. Light the fuse and hold it between your fingers and it'll pop and it won't hurt you. I said, that's crap. You do it. So he did. He held, held it in his hand. The trick is you just don't hold it tight. You just hold it just enough. But it's still, you can, it sting the crap out of your fingers. But anyway, so I did one and that was the end of the popping the Lady Fingers in my hand, okay? Then they had the... Uh, 
They had one called Black Cats. That was probably the most popular firecracker. And uh, anyway, so you know, we popped a lot of firecrackers, had a lot of fun. You know, yet we had, uh, uh, I don't remember if we had the, uh, the ones that shot up in the air or not. I guess, I think we did. I, it's harder. Oh, we did. We had the, uh, like, Roman candles, the ones you had, held in your hand, and you light the end and <laughs> shoots the things up in the air. Those were neat. Some of them were eight shot, and some of them were, like, 12 shot, but they, they were kind of expensive. You didn't get many of those. And uh, anyway, after the, you know, Christmas knew me, of course, prop firecrackers, you know, that carried us all the way up into Christmas Day, up in the evening, having all doing all that stuff. Of course, we had food everywhere. It was just a big time to pig out. And then a couple of days later, we'd either walk into town or somebody would take us into town, or me anyway, take me into town, drop me off, and I'd go visit my buddies and see what they got. Well, they got all kind of crap. You know, the kids in town always got more stuff, number one. They always got better stuff, or at least I thought. It was much more expensive. We didn't have anything like that because they had, you know, they'd have chemistry sets and, and little erector sets and stuff. Hell, I never had any of that stuff. Anyway, uh, and, and they had um, I mean, all kind of games and stuff. You know, we, we had a Scrabble game, I think, in checkers at home, and that was about it. Maybe a deck of cards. We didn't have much. Of course, we didn't play much of that anyway. We were always busy. Out, we were busy outdoors just walking around doing stuff because we lived out in the country, a beautiful place, perfectly private, nearest neighbor probably a mile or two away. Uh, you know, you could go hunting. Had a little uh, single shot twenty two, and during the Christmas holidays, since we were off for two weeks, uh, we had plenty of time to do that. And I'd take my little twenty two single shot. It was a, a lever action that was made in uh, around 1900. Uh, it, was, it was my grandfather, 22, and you put in one little shell and close the thing. And, uh, you know, it, it was accurate, I guess. Uh, I don't remember. I mean, I killed some rats with it one time, and uh, I might have accidentally killed a bird, but if it did, it, the, if I killed a bird, the bird flew in front of the bullet because I was not the world. I, I didn't care about killing them. I mean, I, I'd go hunting by myself. Because I guess I thought I was supposed to, and uh, but as far as really wanting to kill anything, I didn't. And then of course going to town, you know, some of my buddies got twenty twos for Christmas and stuff. So we go, you know, out in the country and or somewhere that walk down. To, there was a river uh, out uh, called Walfers Crossing Bridge, and that was the San Antonio River. And you could walk along that old river bottom and hunt squirrels. You know, we if we kill one, it was pure accident or pure luck because a squirrel's smart. You know, the squirrel sees you coming, it gets on the other side of the tree, but we got smart too. One guy get on one side of the tree and the other guy get on the other, and the squirrel would, he screwed, okay? But what the squirrel do, he just run on up the tree, and, you know, we couldn't hit him anyway. You know, hell, we, you know, we fire, and, you know, that was, but anyway, that's kind of how Christmas was in the 1950s, and, uh, and this is Sunday. December the 11th, 2016, and Christmas is not far away. So for those of you that have Christmas coming up, that's how we did it in the 1950s. It, it changed, you know, later on. You know, the, you know, every, as everybody grew up and moved off, uh, all of it just kind of went away. And that's the way life is. You know, it just, things change. You grow up, and, you know, sometimes you wish you didn't, but you do. But having said all that, I'm going to try to upload this video. I did another video similar to this earlier, and I, it won't upload because I did it. If I do it anything in HD now, it's it, it just takes it takes forever. So anyway, get used to these right now. These are okay though. I, I added a light right over here, and uh, so this is not the dark side of the moon anymore. This is. <laughs> so anyway, guys, Christmas is coming. The lights are on the tree, and. Uh, Hang in there, okay? Thumbs up. Carpe diem. Adios. Bye-bye. Buy USA made when you can. It's difficult, I promise you. But try. And uh, drink plenty of water. Take deep breaths. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth several times a day. It does help relieve stress. Walk, stretch, and all that stuff. But anyway, having said all that, Christmas is coming. Christmas is coming, the lights are on the tree, and I ain't going to sing the rest of it because I don't know the words. Bye.